Hello and welcome to your next and possibly last tutorial in CSS. And today we're going to be discussing pseudo classes and pseudo elements. So I'm going to start off again by creating a couple of paragraph tags. And uh, I'll just put my first name and I don't know, somebody else's name. I click save and let's see how this looks. Okay, now pseudo classes, I would like to go through that first. This I've actually shown you before, and that was with links. And this time I'm going to show it to you with paragraph tags. Now, pseudo classes um, was when, and I think I showed it with you with tables and table cells as well. It's when, after the tag that you want to modify, you put down a colon and then some sort of element after that. For an example, I did hover. And what do we want to do? Change the font style to italic. And when I click save, and I re and whoops, that's not what I wanted to see. And I refresh the page. When I hover over the paragraphs, they become italicized. And uh, that's uh, th those are what pseudo classes are. Um, I, I forgot to bring that up in that previous video, but I wanted to save this for a separate video because I kind of want to differentiate between classes and pseudo classes. Classes are separated with dots, with periods, while these are separated with colons. And yes, you can still combine classes with pseudo classes. For an example, if I just wanted Adam to italicize, then I can give him a class of, I don't know, name. I'll click save, and then before the colon, classes always come first. Remember that. So after the paragraph tag, click um, a period, followed by, I already forgot what I called it, name. And then there's a colon followed by whichever, however you want to modify it. Uh, for me, it will be hover. So when I, when I save this and then refresh the page, only Adam should italicize. So, yep, Adam italicizes, but Matthew does not. So that's how you can combine regular classes with pseudo classes. Now there's actually uh, four pseudo elements that are pre-made. There might be more. I, I only know of four, though. And that is first letter, first line, um, before, and after. So let's start off with first line. So I'm going to create another paragraph tag and I'm gonna throw in a bunch of P's. In fact, I'm gonna make this both better than before. I'm gonna add in spaces so it's more like a real paragraph. And then um, some a break tag. So I'm gonna copy, copy, and then paste this. So we got ourselves a good paragraph so you can see this. And why not? I'll just create, a, I'll create another one of these. I'll copy and paste. What would be even better is if you could tell, differentiate when each paragraph starts. There you go. And I'm actually going to get rid of these ones too. So I refresh the page. This, uh, yep, normal text. So the first one I want to show you is first line, I believe it was. So what you can do is, I'll just get rid of this name because we're not messing with classes. And then type in here instead of hover first line so then you can click save and then when you refresh the page where's that five and now what's the first line is now italicized and because of this it had kinda had a break because all this this is being read as one word you might have noticed that there was a space here and then it continued on because this is a word that was so long that it had to go on to the next line it wasn't counted as part of that previous line. That's why it's not being italicized, in case you're wondering. Um, another one is called first letter. In fact, you know what, before I do this, um, let me show you what it would be, what it would be like um, without a break tag. If we didn't have any break tags in here. Because I want to show you that you don't have to have, you do not have to have break tags. So if it just keeps going on its own, 
Then what will happen is, whoops, that's not what I wanted to change. It will automatically change which tags are remain or which uh, letters are italicized as you move the browser, like that. Oh, and I got an email. So you don't have to have break tags, but you can. And in fact, that's how I would recommend that if you want to have a stylized uh, website. Uh, and of course, you can still um, make this a class if you want, if you just want it to affect one class. So I'll go back and call this one class name. So when I click save and I refresh the page again, it's only going to be the first line of the first paragraph because the other paragraph did not have that class. Another one is first letter. Now I want to do something cool with this one. So I'll make it, I'll keep it italicized and I'll change the font family to Verdana. And that's how you pronounce it, I really don't know. And I kind of want to change the font size too. And I'll make it 15 pixels. So not only the first letter, this is like one of those fancy books, you know, the really fancy first letter kind of a thing. Well, I should probably make the pixels bigger, huh? Let's make it a 25, because it didn't really get bigger. Press F5, and there, there you go, now it's bigger. And you know, you can always do other fancy things like add border, add a border around it if you wanted to. Um, and that's, that's about it for first letter. There's also something called the before. So I'm going to go P, so this is going to affect both of them. And the before and the after what it does is it allows you to add content like an image for example which is what I'm going to show you within or before or after that element so I'll put in a so you type in content so this is a little different followed by URL with parentheses and then I'm going to add in now add in my uh, point I, I don't know you know what that's not the right file name I think it was GIF there you go. And I th we should add it in, and it does. Adds it in before the paragraph start. There's also an after as well. And uh, I believe that would be the last one. And you can do the very same thing. So I'll type in content. And I don't think I put a colon there. A pair of uh, quotes. Oh yeah, I should have put quotes. That's good coding practice. I don't know. That was my bad on that. So I think sometimes I've forgotten to do that, but it, it doesn't. And what was the name of my other file? I'll call it my uh, smiley JPEG. Once again, I failed to get new pictures. Whoops, I must have misspelled them. Content smiley dot JPEG. Oh, whoops, URL. Yeah, because the image is so big that it just goes on to the next line, but it goes after the end of the paragraph tags. And uh, that's about it for pseudo elements and pseudo classes. These are just the four first letter, first line, before and after are the ones that you should memorize, especially if you're a class, if you are taking a class on CSS or XHTML and how you can integrate both a regular class with a pseudo class. And that about wraps it up. I'll see you next time.